Hey guys, it is Tuesday, which as you know is Monday's hangover, and we're going to get into a number of things that we missed yesterday, and there's so many things. It's just kind of coming at us at lightning speed. Tuesday, it is four minutes before noon on Tuesday morning. That means uh, the president has probably already called a lid on the day uh, if his track record of the week proves to be well consistent with what it's been. Uh, in fact, I did hear someone on social media say that they were putting a lid on the day. I, I don't know. I don't know. Between barbecues and lids and ice cream cones and, you know, fresh diapies. I don't know what Joe Biden's doing. He's definitely not talking about this horrendous nightmare that's going on in Israel. Um, we were sitting here and I said, ooh, you know what? Our own Ashton Colson is that works for the Blaze, is a contributor to the Blaze, does all these things for the Blaze to make the Blaze a special place. I said, text her, let's see if she'll come in here. So, Ashton is here. Hi. Yes, hello. Your husband yes. is in Israel. He is. He was there. Why was he there, Josh? Yeah. Why, why was he there in the first place? Absolutely. So, my husband and his brother, Caleb, Joshua and Caleb Coulson, are uh, Messianic Jews. Mm -hmm. um, so, Jewish by heritage, but they believe that Jesus Christ is Yeshua. And they became the new faces of a ministry here in Fort Worth called Zola Levitt. Zola Levitt... Um, uh, produces TV shows uh, that teach the gospel. So they headed out to Israel about two weeks ago to produce a series um, teaching the gospel. And uh, they started out in southern Israel. They actually started out near the Gaza Strip and, yeah. and Lebanon and then made their way to Jerusalem. And um, on Friday morning there, so it would be Thursday about midnight, or almost midnight here, um, I was speaking with him on the phone because it's like 7 a.m. there. And all of a sudden, I started seeing reports on Twitter that there was something going on at the Strip. And, um, and, and that's when it all started. Literally the next day, their flights were canceled. They were supposed to come home today, this mm. morning. They're supposed to arrive at 10 a.m. Um, and since everything began, um, we have no idea when they will be home. In fact, I, I spoke with the U.S. Embassy yesterday and was told, uh, ha have you filled out the crisis intake paperwork? Yes, I have. Okay, well, just wait for a phone call. That's all we got wow. for you. That's scary. I, you know, and I follow what Josh is doing on Instagram. Mm -hmm. And for those of you who are wondering why Ashton looks so familiar, if you follow Blaze on Instagram, you see the news you might have missed, and that's her face. Yeah. So there, there you go. Uh, and she does a fantastic job with that, among so many other things that she does here at the Blaze. Um, but, but her... Her husband Josh. I mean, did you get the picture? Uh, this this is this is not a small man. This is not a weak man. This is not a beta male by any stretch of the imagination. This is a very giant Jason Momoa esque Jew. <laughs> Six eight, uh, three hundred pounds. Yeah, he's a he's a big guy. Yeah, uh, an intimidating figure. So I've been following their reports. Um, well, I mean, I see is what he posts when, while he's in Israel. I saw an interesting post. He's yeah. touring all over the place. He's doing this project. And then uh, what happened Saturday popped off, mm -hmm. and uh, they gave a, a report. And then so I was like, because my, my first thought was, hey, Ashton's husband is there. Yeah. I heard that happen. So I saw their report and then other things, and, and then they immediately could not get out. Yeah. What's the status? I mean, if, if they were just to say, go to Tel Aviv to the airport, what are they going to find? The word on the ground this morning was that there are 64,000 people at the Tel Aviv airport desperately trying to get out. Wow. And if they were able to secure a commercial airline flight, which they have not been, mm. and they've tried several times, they would not be able to get out for another week. And they're currently where? In Jerusalem. They're in Jerusalem. Yeah. And your report yesterday, they were in a bomb shelter? So they've been in and out of bomb shelters. Um, they ha So Jerusalem right now is under um, martial law. Mm -hmm. um, and when the air raid sirens go off, you have 45 seconds to get into a bomb shelter. But you can kind of walk around the city during the day, though most people don't. Yeah. Um, so they were actually interviewing a gentleman who was, uh, is a retired IDF and in the middle of their interview had to move into a bomb shelter. Um, and actually when everything started, uh, even on Saturday and Sunday, they had rockets uh, get shot out of the sky over their heads. They have uh, wow. the, a tape of that as well. So they're, they're there. Are, are you able to, 
Are, is there any cell communication back and forth between you guys? Can so, y'all communicate? Yeah. So right now thank, I'm able thank to. Thank God for that. Yeah, I, I can't even. Uh, yeah. So right now I'm able to call him and he's able to call me and he has Wi-Fi and all of those things. I'm very grateful. Um, however, the hotel that he is staying at has told its employees that um, beginning on Thursday for a three-day period that they are going to turn off the power and the Wi-Fi to the hotel. We we have been told that it is due to a low occupancy issue. I, I don't really know what that means or why they do that. The- Boy, my conspiracy antenna go off on that. If they're going to shut down certain communication systems on Thursday, are they planning something? Yeah, I mean, that, that's wise, another, or, that's know, another great question. Deal? Yeah, I, I, I don't know. I think it's very odd that I mean, they have employees that live there. So you're yeah. just going to... Le- leave those people in the dark you have tourists who are now stuck there like my husband you're gonna leave them in the dark like if his phone dies in that three-day period um not to mention the fact he doesn't have any wi-fi so uh, right we're gonna have to rely on reception to get through yeah um it's a, it's a scary thing because all this morning i've been sitting there because we've heard different reports that are coming out and you, now now they're starting to put faces and names with these images of the people that Mm -hmm. we've seen slaughtered yeah and you think okay as a father how would i feel if my you know one of my daughters was there or if a a sibling or spouse were there and and so you're living that yeah you know you're living that thankfully he is an alpha male uh, in that situation and and uh there's some relief in a situation like that but still yeah I mean I would say out of every person that I know of in my life he would be the one that I would choose to be there right now and to to be a part of this because I know he can handle it I trust his wisdom and discernment in that in that however I can't help but think about all of the people all of the family members that are here right now who are wringing their hands going I I don't know when I'm going to have my husband wife brother, sister, son, daughter, come home. And they don't have the contacts that I have. And they maybe they're not on Twitter. Before I started working here, I wasn't on Twitter. Mm. I am relying on second by second updates on Twitter from a couple of different um, accounts that are they're in yeah. Israel right now. Um, I don't know how they are handling it. And, 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 and to me, I feel like I have an obligation and a responsibility to raise my voice and say, we have Americans who are stuck there and there is no pathway for them to come home. Yeah. Our government is not doing its job that it promised us that as American citizens, it would do every time I've ever traveled internationally. I, I just assumed that if something happened that, my country was coming for me. I mean, wasn't it the? Isn't that the whole point of having a, a a USA passport? Like it was that thing. It was it was. Hey, you better not mess with me. Yeah, I'm always. You know, American they're going to come for me. And now we have how many? I mean, we don't even know how many Americans sitting yeah. in Israel right now, going, I don't know when I'm getting home. Are there commercial flights going in and out of Tel no, Aviv? Not, There's not not that I know of. Yeah. I mean, we have we've attempted several times to to get flights out and every single time they've been canceled mm. i've i've had people say oh well you can book with this or these people sound like they're i mean tel aviv airport's being shot at yeah like even i mean i can't imagine there are flights going you know outside of military oh, airplanes not, now yeah. now poland and italy have both sent in planes for their nationals where's america yeah where are our planes getting our people out it really is a sad state, right? I mean, in terms of what our what our country, what our government is doing. I mean, you're relying on bureaucracy, which God knows, um, you know, we, we can't even get the IRS on the phone when you have a question about what you supposedly owe them. But you got American citizens who are there on the ground and you can't get them out. Yeah, exactly. I mean, you've said there's more effort coming from places like Gaza of yeah. get, help trying to get Americans out yeah. uh, than our own government is doing to get people out yeah. right now. That's that's shocking. It's telling. Um, it's frightening. You know, I made the comment on social media this morning. I said, listen, we gave these people in Washington, D.C. power and a pension, and they don't care about you because when everything goes south, they're going to be in a bunker somewhere that we paid for, secured by armed people that were paying their salaries, and they don't exactly. care what happens with us. I Look mean, at we, what happened to Afghanistan. Yeah. I mean, they pulled out and and just we left knew it. we yeah. knew we had Americans there, and yeah, nobody came for them. Yeah, 
they, you got your finger pretty well on the pulse of the headlines of what's going on. And I mean, because it's your job to do it. And you alluded to earlier, I mean, thankfully, you do have some of the resources and the connections yeah. to be able to to reach out to some some folks. Not everybody has that. Um, do do they, they still haven't come out with a number of how many Americans are missing, right? No, I haven't seen a, a missing number. I don't think but they know. I did, yeah. I, I did hear um, yesterday afternoon that we now have 11 Americans dead. Yeah. But we don't have a number of missing. Yeah. And I, I, you know, and I don't think we have a number of who's at the Tel Aviv airport right now waiting yeah. to desperately come home. Yeah. And that's that's a big problem. But you can't travel without that passport. I mean, you, you get that passport. You you would think that they're going to have a clue about where you are on the globe. Well, you know, you have thing. to fill out paperwork whenever yeah. you go somewhere. You have to say, hey, I'm going to be at this place, There's at this visa. hotel and do all this stuff. So there has to be a database somewhere that says, yeah. here are all the names, here are all the passport numbers of people that are in Israel right now. Well, this, this uh, failure on the intelligence community across the board, oh, both Israeli gosh. and American, to not see this coming it's devastating to even be aware so much less the aftermath of it and we're now four days past and the president still hasn't made any legitimate statement yeah. i mean the only statement he made he kept referring to ukraine instead of israel oh and apparently he's supposed to make a statement at 1 p.m eastern time today that yeah. that's that's what's said but i don't have any uh, confidence yeah. that it's going to be hey this is what we're going to do to tr try and get our citizens out and um or anything even remotely like that. Yeah, and I haven't heard any good solutions yet from anyone. No. Um, well, and, and and now, you know, the other fear is in in my camp, people who have people there, um, if America were to put boots on the ground, you already have Hezbollah and Iran and and um, Iraq and the Taliban saying, oh, it's on if yeah. that happens. Okay, well, um, I have people there yeah. that I would like to see again. Yeah. You know, that I don't want to... I don't want them to be a part of the the casualty count. Yeah, and there's already talk. We'll get into it later on in the show, but there's already talk about um, you know sending in commandos, basically uh, an elite commando force to see if they can rescue American hostages that are in there. I mean, that's yeah, that's, that's what I that's, that's what delicate I heard. And surgical right there. That's the report I I believe I saw on Twitter this morning that they had arrived to get yeah. the host the American hostages out of Gaza. <sighs> which I I am so grateful for. That's amazing, and I and I pray that that's that report is real and that those people get out. Yeah. Once that's done, can we please work on getting the rest of our citizens yeah. out of there? Your Twitter, uh, not Twitter. Your Instagram is at Ashton. Yeah, but I I I'm mostly. Uh, Which uh, what are you I'm using? Public on Twitter. You're putting more. Um, yeah, okay. I'm, I'm private on Instagram. Um, Smart girl. Yeah. Uh, what the nuggets? That's it. Very adult handle. Yes. Um, what the nuggets? Yes. All right. So yeah. It's a it's a silly inside on. joke between me and and my son. Um, keep up with Ashton. Yeah. With what's going on with her specifically with Josh and uh, she's and, and, updating from time to time. And anyone so. that has I gotta go follow um, what the nugget. And anyone that has family that is in Israel. And, and you don't know how to get them out or, or you're asking the same questions that I'm asking, um, send me a message on Twitter. I'll, I'll share your tweet. I'll share your story. Um, I just want these stories to be heard. I, I don't want anyone that's in my position to feel like they're just yelling at a wall yeah. to get their people home. Yeah. Well, thank you for that, honestly. And thank you for the time. I know you've got some other news stations to talk to. So we're going to get out of here. But yeah, I found it. I didn't know. I don't know what I don't know. At what the nuggets. There's like a billion people on Twitter. I don't, it's totally fine. But yeah. So, so. Yeah. That's, thank you. And thank we're praying. You. That's the most important thing at this stage in the game. I mean, <laughs> you know what's funny? You're a person of faith. I'm a person of faith. My husband um, gets on me all the time uh, that, and, and I've heard so many sermons, prayer is powerful and, and on all those things. And it's so easy in our flesh to be like, okay, but like, what can I, like, yeah. I need to do something. And, and, um, if any, if any lessons have been taken out of this, uh, on the spiritual side, it's, I literally have nothing other than prayer. Mm -hmm. I mean, I, I, I'm on the show and I can talk to other news stations and I can, uh, all caps on Twitter, but, but none of that is as powerful as 
praying or having people pray for me. Yeah. And I, I, I see that and then that, and that is more cemented in me now yeah. um, than ever before. So well, thank I know you. you feel helpless, but you're not hopeless. Yeah. And anyway, thank and you. And neither is anyone time. else. Thank, thank you. Thank you for the time. All right. Uh, there's a lot of stuff to be nervous about out there. You got, um, you just open up social media like we're talking about. You turn on the news, you see all kind of stuff going on. It's societal decay, folks. And uh, a lot of folks just run out, buy a gun, then it just sits in a safe. You don't ever train with it. Listen, if there's ever an emergency, you're not going to be prepared and you run the risk of hurting yourself or other people that you shouldn't. There's no way around it. You need to train and you need to do it often. Unfortunately, it's time consuming to go to the range, uh, assuming you're even near one. Ammo prices are through the roof. iTarget was invented so you could practice anytime in the safety and convenience of your own home. Simply download the iTarget Pro app, load your caliber specific laser bullet into your firearm, start training. You can practice alone, compete with friends, use it to safely train friends and family who are new to firearms. Just go over to itargetpro.com. Get 10% off at checkout when you enter the offer code CHAD. I spell it Chad. Smartest, safest way to train, which is why competitive shooters trust dry fire training as part of their regimen. So get yours today. That's the letter I, targetpro.com. Itargetpro.com. Use promo code Chad. We'll be right back. Oh, man. Oh, man. Oh, man. Oh, man. That's, that's, uh, she's, she's holding it together emotionally. Um, I was watching the video she was posting yesterday morning, um, about Josh and just the whole plight and, uh, you know, they're, they're a couple that loves each other and she's worried and rightfully so. Rightfully so. I tell you what let's do. Let's, let's, let's watch some of the news. Let's, let's watch some of the stuff that's going on. Let's pull up some of those videos. I want to get a reaction here. Uh, pull up. Let's start with uh, clip number one. Take a look at this. Tell us, if you will, just what these last few days have, have been like for you and why it's so important that you are appearing here today with the Reverend Sharpton. Well, so I will be honest and maybe a little more vulnerable than I normally would be. These have been some of the hardest days of my adult life. I don't ever remember a moment like this. Um, I have family in Israel right now under siege and being deployed to the front lines. I have staff who can't locate their family. I have friends who are gone. Um, and I think Ambassador Danone put it well in a context that Americans can understand 9-11, the evil that was perpetrated here. But the scale, Jonathan, the right comparison is Nagasaki. This was like an atomic bomb. And as 40,000 people were killed in Japan when they dropped that bomb in Nagasaki, so too were the hundreds upon hundreds upon hundreds of people who were killed in Israel. And so while I am sad and cope, trying to cope, I'll be honest, I am angry. I am angry with the world that allowed the dehumanization of Israelis and sanitized the terrorism of Hamas. I must say, I love this show and I love this network. But I've got to ask, who is writing the scripts? Hamas, the people who did this, they are not fighters, Jonathan. They are not militants. And I'm looking right at the camera. They are terrorists. It is a barbarian who rapes and brutalizes women, who tear, kills children in front of their parents, and then brings them over to Gaza, who literally, we've heard all these reports, and we know these aren't just reports, these were filmed gleefully by the barbarians who committed these grotesque crimes. They filmed, for example, an elderly woman in her home in one of these towns. They burned her alive in her house because she was too infirm to take out. And, you know, parading women bleeding from the crotch because they were raped throughout Gaza while people hoot and holler and cheer. So look, you know, when we say, oh, this was an escalation, it was bound to happen, I am sorry. This was a massacre that was pre-planned. This was not destined to happen. It is not normal to shoot teenagers in the back, hundreds of them. So I just think, like, guys, get the story right, and all these pictures of like, you know, m missiles, or the rubble in Gaza, 
Please talk to the Israeli mothers and fathers who lost their children. Talk to the grandchildren whose grandparents were seized as hostages. And please stop calling this a retaliation. This is a defensive measure against an organization that is committed to one thing, killing Jews. And they're not done. They're not done. They're going to continue on as, as much as they can. And, they, and guess what? They, they're going to kill all Westerners as well. Uh, it's not just about Jews, although that is the initial primary target. That is the thing. But listen, they want all of you, all of you gone eradicated so it makes me sick to my stomach when you know anthony blinken comes out with a uh, a tweet which is now deleted because my god i can't believe anybody approved this tweet when he comes out you know at three o'clock in the morning and says that you know we want a ceasefire uh this, this isn't about a ceasefire i you know we're in a situation with this thing where israel is going to do what israel is going to do and normally the global community says okay israel that's enough it's time to back it off now i don't think they're going to back it off I, I really don't i think that as i stated earlier they've got some concerns right now in terms of how they could com- could com- you know uh, conduct something surgically to get hostages out but at the end of the day they are going to as Benjamin Netanyahu has said they're going to exact a vengeance on Hamas that will be remembered for decades. And I think if they have their way, there'll be no Hamas left to uh, remember anything uh, in, 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 in any matter of time. So, you know, you get reports out where there's babies that have been decapitated and uh, like, like 40 babies decapitated. I don't know the number, but it's just disgusting. I mean, any, any group that wants to come out there and attack people and their in their mo their attack plan their strategy is to go in and kill innocent civilians rape women i had somebody with the audacity on a social media post yesterday to say but can you verify the rape are you out of your f- no no you know what a bunch of goat fuckers up in the mountain they would never rape a woman will that get me canceled if i say that if I say goat, goat fuckers a bunch. Uh, you know, it's the Ides of War. Yeah. You know? Yeah, you get caught up in a lot of things. We are Sparta. Yeah. There's a lot of things you could say right you know? now. But no, no, no. They're, they're going to cut the heads off of babies, and you're honest to God going to ask me on a public forum, is there any way we can confirm the rape? Um, I think the videos of the women with the blood oozing from their crotch is going to be veracity enough to be able to pass your litmus test on the atrocities of war. And that's not war. That's barbarism. That's terrorism is what that is. That's not war. That's not, it's not, it's certainly not conventional uh, war. And it's, it's, it's a violation. It's a war crime is what it is. And these assholes, and that's just what you are, man. It, it, these assholes, they want to try to justify this. Go out in the street and do your little protest. And when you see these people who are in the streets protesting and holding up their screens, holding up their their cell phones, you know, showing the dead bodies of Israelis in the street and laughing about it, uh, and, and they're doing it in Europe, they're doing it in America, it tells you that this level of barbarism is already amongst us. Listen to me, suburban mom. It's already amongst us. It's living here. You look at, and I put, on a, I put a Facebook truck video out this morning that nobody will see because nobody ever sees them. Censorship is real. And, and I said, listen, guys, there's this thing called the FBI terror watch list. That watch list has a list of people with known terror ties. They are wanted by the FBI. They're in the wind. And in the period of time between 2016 and 2020, when we had a guy in the White House who spray painted himself orange and every night tweeted something mean and everybody got pissed off about it, there was only 11 apprehensions at our border of people who were on the known terror watch list. Only 11. In 2019, there were zero. You know why the number was so low? It's because they weren't coming to the southern border. The southern border was reasonably secure and sealed. Now, since Puddinhead got into the Oval Office or wherever he's spending nap time on whichever cot, 
We've had, well, just last year alone, there were 98 apprehensions at the southern border in 2022. And so far this year, up to October, we've had 151 apprehensions of people who are on the terror watch list. So that ought to tell you what's happening. Now, that doesn't count the tens, maybe hundreds of thousands of gotaways that have gotten through the poorest southern border. And don't forget the northern border, which is wide, freaking open. There's not even security there. They're coming down through Canada come through Canada, come right straight on down. They just caught a guy who was a a Brazilian ex-military serial murderer. They caught him, apprehended him at the northern border. These people are in the country. They're waiting on the signal, the thumbs up, to be activated to do whatever nefarious plot they're going to carry out. And here we are calling for a ceasefire. Here we are parading in the streets. Here we are... um, (laughs) You know, uh, pal- queers for Palestine and, and, you know, Jews for Jews for Palestine. You, you ignorant people out there that want so badly to belong to a group because you were born with whatever privilege that the media told you to feel guilty about. You were brainwashed in school. And then you turn around and say, you know what? I need to feel marginalized, too. So I'm going to identify with these victimized, so-called victimized, oppressed groups out there that somebody told you was oppressed. Oh, they're living in an open air prison. Of course, there was going to be resistance. Listen, Rashida Tlaib, what happened on Saturday on a Jewish holy day and holiday and on their on their Sabbath was not resistance. When you paraglide in and you shoot people execution style in the back, when you behead and decapitate children and rape women and set old ladies on fire, and then you put the executions on Facebook, many of you have not dug deep into the web, and I don't encourage you to do it, but it is horrific, the stuff that I have seen, when they're hacking people's heads off in the front yard with a garden hoe, I promise you, you don't want to see these things, guys, but it's here it's, it's here. It's in America. You know what's here? I don't care what face. I don't care what pigmentation of skin you add to it. I don't care how the funny last name sounds or if you can pronounce it. I'm telling you, it's the presence of evil. Evil. And we want to sit up here and act like everything is hunky-dory in our safety and security, in our air-conditioned homes, you know, with our Amazon.com and our Walmart self-checkout. And I promise you, folks, the days of sitting in some lavish comfort thinking that everything is okay with the world, those days are done. You've now seen, yet again, the face of evil. It's being paraded in front of you. And if you're out there throwing a parade to honor that, you're a piece of shit. Plain and simple. All right. If you're suffering from low energy, I'm not. If you got brain fog, I don't. If you got that unexplained extra flab, I got a lot less of it. The problem could be, probably, is your liver. Now, you may not know it, but your liver is the foundation for good health. It performs more than 500 key functions like filtering toxins, breaking down nutrients, keeping cholesterol in check. But over time, your liver can start to wear down. And that's when you get those energy crashes and the belly fat and trouble with memory and concentration. Fortunately, there's a simple solution. It's called Liver Health Formula. Liver Health Formula contains 11 powerful herbs and nutrients clinically proven to recharge and revitalize your liver. It also helps protect against a fatty liver, which is a silent epidemic affecting 100 million Americans. Liver Health Formula is manufactured in the U.S. It's approved by American doctors and and as a listener of this show, you can try Liver Health Formula and receive a free bottle of nanopowered omega-3. That'll help your heart and brain stay healthy when you order it today. So go to GetLiverHelp.com. That's GetLiverHelp.com slash Chad and claim that free bonus gift. Again, GetLiverHelp.com slash Chad. We'll be right back. Israel is at war. We didn't want this war. It was forced upon us in the most brutal and savage way. But though Israel didn't start this war, Israel will finish it. Once the Jewish people were stateless, once the Jewish people were defenseless, no longer, Hamas will understand that by attacking us, they've made a mistake of historic proportions. We will exact a price that will be remembered by them and Israel's other enemies for decades to come. Yeah. Decades to come. Um, What you have here is a fundamental ideological difference. You you, you see, the the thing is, and this is what I said back in 20, 
Well, I said it back in 1991, honestly, but then I said it in, um, again in 2001, that when you're dealing with this stuff, you're dealing with religious issues. These are religious fundamentalists who believe that they are honoring their God by murdering you. So that is basically the definition of fanaticism. And whenever you have fanaticism, it totally gets rid of any form of critical thinking. You, you don't, these are not, we're not dealing with intelligent beings. This is pure evil. Now, the problem is you have morons out there, as I alluded to in the last segment, who are out there parading in the street, who really should have better sense. They, they weren't raised and brainwashed from birth to be extreme radicals with a religious fervor to murder uh, and to wear suicide vests and things of this nature. Uh, so there's people who have lived a pretty privileged life here in America that should have been taught a very better value system, but somehow it has eluded them. And they think it's okay to say really, really dumb things. Enter the whore that goes by the name of Mia Khalifa. Now, Mia Khalifa is, she was, for those of you who don't know, and thankfully many of you may not, Mia Khalifa is a Lebanese-American. She was born in Lebanon. She was raised in Lebanon. Her parents and her moved here to America. Um, and uh, back, I don't know, 13, 14, 15 years ago, she became a porn star. And she caught a lot of flack because she performed a threesome on camera wearing a hijab. Um, obviously the Muslim community wasn't a big fan of any of that. Uh, and she's, she, in 2016, was the most searched porn star, uh, on the entire internet. Now she retired from the, the career in dicking and, uh, has now worked, um, in entertainment, I guess. Uh, she's had a contract with Playboy, uh, various other things. I don't even know. But um, she's made a lot of money. Trust me, she's made a lot of money here in America. And uh, she's posted a few things on X over the last couple of days, some stuff that's um, so Chad, amazing. This is, this is the initial one, and she's deleted that's this the one. one I retweeted this one. Yeah, it, this one's been deleted. I had to go find this one. Yeah, this one, I retweeted it. It's gone now. Uh, can someone please tell the freedom fighters in Palestine to flip their phones and film horizontal? This was during the attack. Right during it. In the and middle of the hit, So yeah. rather than holding your phone like this, vertically, she wanted you to use a 16 by 9 ratio like your TV screen and turn it sideways you know, for quality effect there. Now, that is how they film her when she's working. That is exactly how <laughs> she's shot, usually in 4K. Yeah. Um, but she tweeted, um, I can't believe the Zionist apartheid regime is being brought down by guerrilla fighters in fake Gucci shirts. The biopics of these moments better reflect that. Well, uh a lot of the folks that uh, she was working for, Playboy including, included, fired her immediately on the spot, uh, ended the contract. OnlyFans, um, she's on there. She, uh, you know, listen, there's all these different platforms that she's a part of. Uh, she called a photo of the Hamas terrorists a Renaissance painting. Now, I'm telling you this just to explain to you how stupid this human being is. Um, this is a person who should know better. But no, again, when you have a radical ideology that has wormed its way into your, uh, into your brain and you start believing some things that are really off the reservation, uh, she went after Kylie Jenner. Uh, who had posted a message in support of Israel. She said, if true journalism exists, the next person to talk to Kylie Jenner will ask her opinion on geopolitical tensions in the Middle East and not break eye contact until she can string one coherent sentence together since she wants to take a stance to her uh, 400 million followers so badly. So, um, 
you know, I don't really get my geopolitical influence or my um, foreign policies from Kylie Jenner. But, uh, yeah, that I, the, the level, I, I, and I, honest to God, I'm the same way when I retweeted her thing about turning the phones horizontal. Right. I, I just said speechless. Yeah. I got, I, mean, I got nothing. Yeah. I mean, I got nothing. And, and, and here, if you're not drawing your own conclusion, let me, let me help make that critical step for you. She's a porn star who, if she were there, they would rape and murder her because she is a major contributor to the degradation of society, which radical Islam looks at and says, this is why the West is the great Satan. They would literally murder her on the spot because of who she is. They would rape and murder her. And after they murdered her, they would rape her some more over and over and over again. So these people that she is defending, this is how stupid the Western mind has gotten. That we would still defend these people. I don't know about you guys, but I don't know about you guys. But like, I, I don't even like Facebook trolls. Yeah. Well, who that come at why, me. I'm not going to defend them. That's why I found this particular instance so interesting, because I think it's a very good uh, encapsulation of a lot of the people in America who are very pro-Palestine right now, who have just, the mask has been removed, yeah. and they've just been exposed for being just horrific people all around, and just brain dead to the realities of what Palestine is. Like, you talk about the gays for Palestine, like, they're gonna th they would throw you off a roof. Immediately. Yeah, like, no questions Khalifa, asked. They would throw her off a roof. So it's just, it's... It's odd. It reminds me a little bit of the hippies in the 60s who were very pro-Viet Cong and were walking around the streets waving the flag yeah. of the communist v Viet Cong. And it's just like, what, what are you guys doing? This is, are you stupid? Do you even understand what you're supporting? They would kill you. I feel like they, this is, that's who's lost the most in this particular instance right now is those people have exposed themselves completely. Yeah. And I think this is a situation where a porn star like Mia Khalifa has truly had her brains fucked out. <laughs> Sorry, Mom. But there you go. That's the situation. Uh, guys, cleaning your guns is important. Owning a gun is important. Having it in a functional order is important. Have the bang bangs. Have all the little bullets that go in it. But make sure your gun is clean. Make sure your gun is clean. Somebody brought me a, a rifle the other day. They want to show me it was an old rifle. And I opened it up and I looked down the uh, I looked down the barrel of it and there was a big cobweb down in the barrel. And I was like, Yeah, I know it's an old gun you're showing me, but wow. I mean, there's a big it was completely blocked with a cobweb down in there. Uh, you got to clean your guns, folks. I've seen some atrocious uh, firearms out there. And there's a lot of ways that you can clean your guns. But I'll tell you, the best way to do it is by using Barrel Buddy. Barrel Buddy's a great solution. They compress to fill the interior of the gun's barrel, and it cleans the rifling grooves as well, even knocks all the cobwebs out. They come in, in like seven different sizes, and, and of those sizes, any one of them, they'll, they'll, they'll match the caliber of firearm you have. So Barrel Buddy's composed of these polymers that won't leave behind the residual particles like a cloth will so it's a lot safer and it cleans by scrubbing it collects the particulates it absorbs any remaining residue buffs the interior surface clean you can even lubricate your firearm with them as well so it's an important step in being a responsible gun owner having a clean gun barrel buddy is a new concept it's a better way to take care of your firearm so get some today you're going to love them go to barrelbuddy.com that's barrelbuddy.com we'll be right back You know, yesterday I was watching the show, and I, I read the live comments even when I don't chime in. I'm, I'm there. I'm usually doing something else. But, I, uh, you know, the show's on silent, and I'll read some of the comments. And I, and I, I see some of the theological questions that pop off, and, and I hear people say, we have to defend Israel because it's Israel. Like, if you're a Christian, you have to defend Israel. Well, uh, you know, where, where I get a little controversial on that is, again, I, I stated yesterday that the governments of the world tend to be evil, especially the more power they have, because they tend to be run by men who, in their hearts, ultimately are evil. Even the good ones are evil. I mean, the best of men still have evil intentions sometimes. That's why we're all sinners. 
But, um, you know, when you give people a lot of power, they tend to get a little bit crazy out there. And so this whole blind faith into I'm going to support Israel no matter what. No, I, I, I want them to exact justice for this. They deserve the right to be able to do that. And, and they need to fight their war. Let me be clear. I'm not saying that we need to be sending our sons and daughters over there to fight Israel's battle. Um, we'll see what happens. We, we have to defend our own. America needs to take care of America right now. That's my biggest message that I have in these moments is that America has a problem right here at home. We have already sold, or we keep saying sold. We haven't sold shit. We've given all of our missiles to Ukraine. We're seven years behind in manufacturing them. We're in trouble. We would not be able to fight an, a multi, uh, a multi uh, front war. Uh, we, we're out of ammunition, folks. I mean, we, the, the powder ain't dry. So we're in trouble in regards to that. But I want America to take care of America. I want America to take care of American interests. Um, the Biden administration has fueled Iran. Iran ultimately backed this attack. Uh, Iran that get, takes to the street and chants death to Israel and death to America. I tend to have a problem with that. That's kind of their go-to rah-rah, U-G-L-Y, you ain't got no alibi cheerleading speech that they tend to do in their parades. I'm not down with that. And so we have to call it what it is. It's pure evil. I think we've done a good case of that, but America's got to take care of America. Now, when it comes to Israel, I think Israel has the right to defend itself and to exact vengeance and do what they need to do to take care of their own. They have that right. We could go deeper into that, what that looks like on a, on a macro level, but I don't think we need to in this case. Now, theologically speaking, uh, again, I am a person, as a believer, as a Christian, if we're going to throw the labels around, as a Christian who believes in the New Testament, who believes in the Messiah, who, who believes that Jesus is the Messiah, um, in the writings of the Apostle Paul, in, in those epistles, in those letters to the first century church, he went to great lengths to basically tell us that Israel rejected the Messiah and the, those Gentiles, that's everybody that's not a Jew, they were grafted into the tree of life because of their faith. Galatians chapter 3, you can go read it on your own time, but Galatians chapter 3 says in verse 7, it says, those who are of faith are the children of Abraham. Now, any Jew in the first century would have understood what Paul was saying. He was saying, hey, the Christians, the believers, those who accepted Jesus as the Messiah, they are the, they are the new Israel. And in essence, what he's saying, before you get mad at me, and you will, that's okay, I'm just telling you in a brief two-minute theological lesson of what I believe, I don't believe that, that God's chosen people are about real estate anymore. I believe they're about grace. It's not about race. It's about grace. And by the way, when they vacated Israel and everybody left, they all had you know African DNA when they came back and reestablished Israel in 1948, they all came back white. So that's weird how that works. They all, Sephardic Jews left, Ashkenazi Jews came back. So um, you, you don't trace those African bloodlines into the Jews of Israel today. That's a whole other discussion. I'm just saying, while you're canceling me and mad at me right here, I'm saying that it's about people of faith. That's Israel, okay? Now, does it change the fact that Israel is our allies in the Middle East? doesn't change the fact that because of our relationship and the nature of our relationship with them, that we should help them, aid them, give them whatever they need in support while continuing to maintain our own battle here in America, in our own American interest. And we can do that without getting lost in the religious fervor of a belief system that could cause us to make some of the same mistakes that those that we consider enemies are making. I hope that that makes sense to you and that you listen to everything that I had to say right there in making that point. Because I hear some of the comments, I read some of the comments, and you guys are running off into a blind faith thing when it's a whole lot more involved than just, oh, we're supposed to defend Israel and bless Israel. And Well, you got to know who and what Israel is before you can bless Israel. And it's not just a place that was set up in the Middle East in 1948. It's a whole lot more involved on a spiritual level than that, okay? Now, be mad at me. Send the hate mail, whatever you want to say, but I'm just telling you it's about grace and not necessarily about race. But we have to do what's right and we have to do what's just because that's what you as a believer are commanded to do if you are a person of faith. You're also a child of Abraham. <laughs> All right. So if you want to leave a comment, you can go to where podcasts are offered. Leave all the stars you want to leave. And, uh, and as, as few stars as you want to, but I'm just telling you, that's, that's what I believe. Go read Galatians chapter 3 and, uh, and, and see what you come away with on that. 
Uh, go go read Romans 9, 10, 11, and uh, check it out. See what you think. It deals with those topics. Uh, here we are, folks. Here we are. Crazy world we're living in. And uh, I'll tell you, makes my anxiety go higher, Brandon. It does. I woke up this morning and I was like, oh, I feel a little bit of that inflammation coming on. I feel it. So I said, you better take some relief factor. It's true. Uh, I like to take it because it's an incredible anti-inflammatory It that uh, works to reduce my pain. It works for me. And if not, I've got chronic ailments and you don't, I don't like them. So uh, it's an all natural alternative to pain medications. You can trust it to keep you pain free. Inflammation is not only the chief cause of pain, but it's also a factor in many other diseases. And I feel better knowing that relief factor is always working to keep my inflammation markers in check. Plus, I just feel better. So hundreds of thousands of people order Relief Factor, about 70% reorder it every month because it works for them. You can get a trial pack right now to see if it works for you. It's only $19.95 to get the trial pack, and I bet it reduces your pain. Give it a shot and see. Go to relieffactor.com to order, or you could call them 800, the number four, Relief. Relieffactor.com. Feel the difference. We'll be right back. Hey, if you want to uh, make a little road trip, come hang out with me, Birmingham, Alabama, Friday night. I'll be at the Stardome. Come get your tickets at watchchad.com. That's where all the fun stuff is. That's right, Birmingham, Alabama. It's technically Hoover, but we'll call it Birmingham. We'll class it up a little bit. The Stardome, and then next week I'm in uh, Terrell, Texas, as well as Cleveland, Texas. Big towns. Yeah, we're going to be there. You can get that information, watchchad.com. And then first week in November, three nights, five shows, I will be at the Looney Bin, Tulsa, Oklahoma. Uh, there's a lot going on, folks. Um, the statement is uh, we will do what we need to do. Eleven Americans confirmed dead at the hands of Hamas terrorists. Uh, others feared to be among the hostages. Those were Americans. That's what I'm talking about. American American interests are there. And um, they are talking about putting together a commando mission. Apparently there are some folks already there, boots on the ground, with an attempt to rescue American hostages held by Hamas in Gaza. I mean, the, the level of incompetence on the, on the intelligence community for this entire thing is absolutely insane, and I hope they write books on this to talk about the failure. They really do. They really do need to. Uh, they don't know how many Americans are being held. They don't know how many hostages there are. Um, but guaranteed there are some. So there you go. The... Um, he said, we have hostage rescue teams and our special forces. They need to be shipped immediately. Get on those C-17s and C-5s, fly to Israel, prepare to rescue these American citizens. Um, we ought to have the FBI hostage rescue team also deployed to Israel. Well, folks, we'll see what's going to come out. But what we've seen so far is absolutely horrific, horrific. Um, tomorrow night, you need to make sure you don't miss Glenn Beck's special. He's going to show you a lot of things you're not going to want to see. But uh, you need to check it out. That's Wednesday night. BlazeTV.com slash Chad. Use promo code Chad to subscribe. It'll save you on an annual subscription. Don't forget, head over to uh, ChadOnBlaze.com. Do a little shopping. Tomorrow is Wednesday, and you know what that means. We'll see you there. Love you. God bless you. Bye.